Morning, everybody. Um, good to uh, have you uh, on board for today's webinar. Um, so we'll, we'll get underway. Um, so just as a bit of background, my name's Michael Dennehy from uh, Collins SBA. Um, and Rob Cameron and I have been working with the THA and its, uh, and its members the last two months, um, particularly up until recently in relation to government uh, support and navigating that, which uh, may have uh, spoken to some of you on this uh, webinar. Um, it's now all about, um, as we see it, phase two, um, which is the transitional period um, with respect to the relaxing of uh, restrictions uh, leading into when um, government support goes away, which at this point is uh, end of September. Um, let's hope the hospitality industry gets a bit longer support with respect to uh, federal and possibly state government. Um, but it is all about recovery, um, rethinking your business and then rebuilding. Um, hence the, uh, the theme of um, our support and help um, for the THA and its members. Um, my background as a, as a business advisor for Collins SBR, I've actually um, had experience advising uh, members of the uh, industry over many, many years. Actually dabbled in a, in a restaurant um, many years ago with a few mates. That was a, an experience that um, I came out with a lot of learning. So I do understand the industry um, and I guess operationally. And I know everybody within the industry is very passionate about what they do. Um, as I am in what I do, but also for the industry. Um, so today's uh, session, and just please uh, yell out if, you, uh, if you've got any questions. The use the question and answer um, facility, and uh, we'll look to uh, answer those at the end of the session. Um, so just please uh, write down any questions you've got along the way, and we'll just go through them at the end. Um, I am recording this just so you're aware, um, so you can one get a copy, and the THA will uh, also put this on their website, um, so uh, everyone can sort of benefit from uh, from some of the takeaways. So let's get started. So this is all about um, getting ready for a post-COVID nineteen world, um, whatever that looks like. Um, obviously, no one can really tell us what that looks like um, at the moment. It's a matter of, I mean, I take the, um, just uh, getting the slideshow ready. I, I take the view that um, it's a matter of trying to control what you can control firstly. Um, and a lot of the stuff we talk about uh, in this webinar is, is certainly around that. Um, so, Part of this is, is essentially giving a bit of an overview of our group coaching um, uh, offer, I guess, for, for members, which um, the THA is certainly promoting and, and talking to, uh, to venue operators. Um, and so this will sort of, as I said, give you an insight into sort of the six modules that uh, that coaching um, group is gonna to touch on in a lot more detail. But as I said, it's all about recovering rethinking and rebuilding because um, as we know it's a new world as far as the business environment and what that looks like in 12 months as I said who knows um, but I'm pretty sure of one thing it's not going to be like what it, what it was pre-COVID um, so I think it's very important that uh, as a as an operator you've got essentially a startup mindset and we've seen that in many instances, and, and you know, you guys on on the on the webinar um, most likely have sort of approached like that, um, having to react very quickly and be agile. So going forward, you need to you know keep adopting that mindset, um, and sort of never revert to sort of apathy. Um, so being agile all the time, because um, as we know, consumer behaviour changes. Um, and it can change pretty quick if you're not on the ball. And you know, COVID has, has demonstrated that. Um, 
the use of data and analytics is important. Um, and I think utilising technology, which we'll touch on, um, is so important and how you use that for marketing and um, keeping communication and contact with your customers. And overarching is it's got to be a team approach. Um, it's about your people, your suppliers, your advisors, your community. Um, and being in sync um, as a team to ultimately um, deliver a great experience for your customers. So I see this as a great opportunity um, as of you know, talking to many operators over the last couple of months, um, there's certainly the pleasing part is that a lot have got that mindset, um, albeit forced, but equally, um, the, the ones that take a positive view, look at the opportunities, how can they make the business better, are gonna be the ones that survive and thrive um, post COVID. Um, the group coaching includes expert presenters. Um, so I've got Robin as myself, but we've got other uh, uh, technical experts in specific areas that um, will be of considerable value for those that attend. Um, it's a, Like I said, it's a group coaching format via Zoom. And the collaboration amongst those that attend is, uh, is, is as, as much of value as the content. Um, so lots of discussion and, you know, those relationships developed in the group coaching um, can be ongoing and, you know, a sounding board and mentors and I think that's so important, having sounding boards and, and people you can turn to um, when you've got questions because it is a lonely life um, in business, um, particularly if you've got no working partners. Um, so it is so important you've got people to turn to um, if and when needed. Um, the group coaching set up with similar types of business. So we've got the three uh, different segments there and there's a maximum of 12 in each group just to maintain um, the, the outcomes. Look, at the end of the day, um, you know, content's marvellous um, and the use of content um, it varies between different people, different operators. Um, at the end of the day, it's how you use the content and we believe success is about having a plan um, and a plan that is for the business, not just for the owners. And so the, you, you, your people need to be involved. There needs to be an appropriate mindset. Um, so not coming from a place of fear, um, but coming from a place of opportunity. And at the end of the day, it's all about action. Um, you can have the best plan in the world, um, but if you don't action it, and don't action, I guess, the priorities around that, uh, all it is is a dream. Um, so it's about knowing. It's not about knowing, it's about doing. Um, and that's very important. And that's one of the, um, the modules of the workshop we've got a, one of our expert presenters uh, helping in that regard. So the program uh, essentially covers six modules, as I said. Um, first, it's about making your business work. So that's looking at coming away with a financial business model and forecasting tool um, that starts to give you a lot better sense of what your business looks like financially and what needs to change moreover. Um, customer first thinking. Um, it is so important that with we're looking at our customer um, in what we do with respect to marketing um, and with what you will come away with is clarity around your brand and, and understanding what competitive differentiation means. Um, it's different to differentiation in the first instance, okay? Rethinking digital. So uh, this will be a technical roadmap for your future business. So. No doubt, you know, some of you on here, all of you maybe, um, use technology to, to a certain degree. Um, so again, it's understanding what's out there. Um, and then, I guess, looking at what suits your business. Um, and again, we've got an expert speaker in the workshops um, talking about that. 
leading and managing people. Um, you walk away through ways to get the best from your team. Um, at the end of the day, you can have the best product, the best menu, the best coffee. Um, but if you don't have a good team, um, then the quality of your products and, and offerings is going to be always compromised. Um, so the leading and managing is so critical. Thinking into results to how to overcome the knowing doing gap I mentioned before. And finally, traction. Um, this is where rubber hits the road. So having your business plan and a new business model um, after working through all the six modules. Um, so you, you, you're confident, uh, albeit, I guess, with not necessarily a, a great deal of clarity around what the environment looks like. But like I said, you can control what you can control. So it's having a model that you believe is going to suit the new environment. And it's all about, as I said, traction um, and, and getting results. Uh, bear with me. Um, so the first module is about making your business work. Um, so what is a, a financial model? Um, so I guess I've got an example here just to sort of illustrate the point. So this this is just assuming there's an example of a you know a restaurant or a cafe, uh, possibly like yourselves, where you've got this data. You know what your average weekly customer numbers are, your transaction value, and you know through to your cost of goods. So at the end of the day, for the year, this operator achieves a profit of 123,000. So it's then understanding what happens um, with respect to a change in customer demand. So this is what is happening, obviously. Um, so running some scenarios um, ar around this. So this example is, well, there's 15% less customers. Now, I appreciate that, you know, some operators, maybe including yourself, had to close totally, um, maybe even still close totally. Um, so again, this is just to illustrate the point of what your financial business model uh, looks like. So this is an example again, where the number of weekly transactions fell by 15%, the average transaction value remained the same, and you can see the, the stark in reduction in profit. Now this is assuming that employment costs remain the same, and so typically that would be uh, a variable cost that you would change, but it's just to illustrate the point. And then if it, if it drops again by another 15%, and they spend less, the impact is a loss of 53,000. As I say, albeit that your cost model would change with respect to employment and possibly some costs because um, there's variable costs and fixed costs. So again, this is just extreme a model that's uh, highly unlikely, but just to, I guess, illustrate the point um, around your financial model. So it's really then, okay, what does your business model look like now? Um, and most likely it's changed somewhat, maybe uh, less than the more, but it's probably changed since COVID-19. Um, if it hasn't, you certainly need to look at that. And that's very much part of uh, what we're helping businesses with. And what will it need to look like that's financially sustainable, um, more importantly. So in the new world, you need a financially sustainable business. Um, that's going to deliver appropriate financial outcomes for the, all the hard work, long hours you put in. Um, and also as a result, you're driving arguably more value into the business um, for ultimately when you sell. So as far as the, the, the business model, um, what we then go into is how we bring it to life through your brand, pricing, products, technology, people, leadership, um, to mention the main few, but certainly um, other aspects to that. Um, we've developed a cash flow forecasting model um, then as far as that aspect goes. Um, and this is one's important just to start to do some scenarios around what your business looks like subject to that decline in revenue. So you can start to map out, um, I guess, what 
people structure you need and what that looks like financially. Um, and obviously at the moment, most of you may be getting government support in some form or another. When that goes away, um, you've got to repay deferred costs. So starting to make sure you know what that looks like. And that's part of planning for success. So your business model plus cash flow forecast um, is that financial plan for growing your bank balance ultimately. The second module was about customer first thinking. Um, and this is you know, principally about your brand and marketing. Um, so what exactly is branding? Um, so, you know, people have got different interpretations. Um, back in the day, it was probably seen as just a logo, but that's uh, certainly as probably most of you can appreciate, is a lot more than, than that these days. Um, and those that have successful brands, that translate into successful businesses. Um, so it's about creating a series of memorable moments that intrigue, surprise, charm and excite and being authentic, um, more importantly. And at the end of the day, this can create opportunity for the businesses that have got um, strong brands. Um, the, the impact of psychology should not be underestimated too, um, particularly on your marketing. And if, if something you take away from this is to, um, to actually watch a couple of these videos um, of Rory Sutherland. Um, he's a, a marketing guru um, and he, he gives a lot more perspective of the importance of psychology. Um, in the context of you know, a restaurant and cafe um, and, and looking for improvement, um, you know, he, he used the example of a, a Michelin star restaurant. So obviously um, high quality food um, and, and service. Um, but if that venue smells, um, looks untidy, doesn't look clean, that will compromise the experience and the outcomes um, of that business. So it's building how you can improve your business, understanding psychology of your customer um, is, is not to be underestimated. So if, if the only one thing you do out of this session is go away and watch those videos, I, I think you'll, uh, you'll get certainly some, some learnings for, for moving forward. Um, this little graph talks about essentially um, brand as an intangible asset of businesses. And you can see here from 1955 through to beyond 2000, um, as a percentage of assets in a business, um, tangible assets has decreased significantly um, to be now less than 50%. Um, so I guess your brand being an intangible is on the flip side, um, is even more important than it was you know, 50, 60, 70 years ago. Um, so that's just gives perspective, I guess, around the importance. And customer first thinking to essentially um, understanding what they, they will notice. And at the end of the day, we're programmed to notice what's different. Um, in this slide, you will notice the red star. So, you know, at the end of the day, how do you make your business have a red star and you know, your competitors or whoever you're directly dealing with are in the black. Um, so it's getting your head around those aspects. And part of that is answering this question. So your business is the only restaurant, cafe that does what or provides what? Um, so having, again, think about that is so important because that's all about positioning your business with a good brand that customers are thinking about you um, when they're thinking about a restaurant and cafe. And in this, this session, we also look about uh, revenue opportunities um, and, and using this sort of graph aspect, it's identifying but prioritising. Because um, no doubt you have and you will 
there's always opportunities. And as I said, it's having that mindset around opportunities, but it's also prioritising. You can't do everything at once. And as we all know, um, in the whirlwind of running a business, um, it is about priorities and it's about uh, working uh, and making sure you, you focus on these priorities on a regular basis. Um, so that's sort of some form of accountability at the end of the day that's, that's needed. Third module is about rethinking digital. So why is tech becoming so important to hospitality businesses? Um, I guess since COVID, um, we've certainly seen, I guess, a lot of businesses using tech more. And um, I guess in the restaurant cafe, specifically, there's been a lot of businesses that have pivoted to some degree, um, you know, around their takeaway, uh, take home, their delivery, uh, virtual um, um, aspects of their business, and even introducing products um, that, again, is part of that rethinking and to what extent that should continue in some form or another in the new in the new world so tech certainly brings efficiency um, making sure that um, from an internal perspective um, you know the productivity and efficiency of your people in the business is maximized owning your customer and know how to love them so i guess um, again um, using data and analytics you can get to understand your customer. Um, so, you know, as I said, there's various aspects of this tech and we'll, we'll have a look at that shortly. And on the right-hand side, you can see visuals of, of different types of um, software. Um, so it's getting a right fit for your business. Um, but that data can be so important from a marketing perspective as well and the analytics. And in that context, I think it's important to understand any technology you use, who owns that data? Um, so, for example, um, is I use you know the, the Skip um, app um, to pre-order a, a coffee from my local cafe. Um, now, who owns my data, my email? Um, I'd suggest to you Skip does. So it's thinking through um, that aspect. Um, with respect to, to that data and how you can use it. It can be very, very powerful if, if used appropriately. And ultimately, it's the user experience that's uh, so important. And I guess this is where the customer behaviour is changing somewhat. And, you know, at the end of the day, your customer wants to feel and perceive they're in control. Um, and certainly technology by way of apps and software can help provide that. Um, so what's out there now? Like I said, there's a raft on the right-hand side in visual. Um, again, it's what's the right fit for your business. So our expert advisor will, will, will sort of talk through that in the workshops and then how to execute technology effectively. Um, so as we're all aware and experienced, no doubt, technology is one thing, using it effectively is another. Um, and particularly when you've got a number of employees, um, it's making sure they certainly are across it and it's used appropriately for your business. Um, these are just examples um, for online ordering, in-room ordering, order at the table, which I think uh, is definitely going to become more commonplace, obviously, with um, COVID-19 rules. And then obviously accessing real-time information about your customers. Um, can be so powerful as far as um, your business moving forward. Like I said at the outset, your people um, is one of those intangible assets of your business um, that's not on your balance sheet, but so critical to the success of the business. So this module uh, talks about you know, your structure around your people, um, which needs to be linked to your business model. So when I talk about structure, um, essentially, that's your maybe your organisational model, depending on how many employees you've got. Because um, obviously, if you've only got a few, then it's a lot simpler as opposed to if you've got 50. Um, but at the end of the day, the teamwork's critical with a shared sense of purpose. Um, 
I cannot overstate that as far as purpose and everybody in the business understand that shared sense of purpose, um, which somewhat comes back to having a business plan and everybody understanding where the business is heading. Um, so something that unfortunately is uh, lacking in the majority of businesses that I come across and certainly um, that's a, a, a specific expertise of myself as far as uh, helping businesses in that sense. Communication, um, as we know in any relationship, personal, business or otherwise, communication um, is so critical and if you've got a breakdown in communication then everything's compromised. So having a rhythm around communication and a structure um, can just help make sure you're maximising your communication. Um, so that's really about what you communicate, when you communicate it, who you communicate it to and how. Um, and we've got tools and templates that we use that uh, we know are successful. Um, reference there, L10 agenda, it's level 10 agenda. So that's a, an agenda that's very succinct. It works the time frames and it's very much about getting solutions and outcomes because um, people's uh, uh, reticence with meetings is uh, just having a meeting for the sake of it. Now in uh, hospitality particularly, um, when it's difficult to get all your people in the same place um, because of different shifts, um, then that's where potentially technology comes in equally. Um, but also, I guess it's the agenda that's so important, okay? And so that agenda might be different between your daily shift meeting, uh, your weekly meeting, a monthly meeting, and quarterly meeting. And the regularity somewhat dictates the content insofar as if it's quarterly. That's really big picture and that's about sharing progress with respect to your priorities around your business plan. Um, again, this is all overlooked principally um, and um, it is so valuable for success and we know this through experience. Um, and so the challenge is in, in the whirlwind of running a business, just getting the structure in place and some good uh, habits um, can make a huge difference. Processes. Um, as I would appreciate that, uh, again, in the, in the world we're running business, getting time to document and make sure people are following process is sometimes challenged and compromised. Um, so possibly if you've got downtime at the moment, this is a great opportunity to get your processes in place, refine them. So on the way out and as you start to, to build the business, you have got your brand with your way, okay? of how you do things um, and obviously provides consistency of delivery of service, uh, product um, and the ultimate business with respect to processes is I guess in generally franchises but you'd look at McDonald's, uh, you know you walk into a McDonald's store anywhere in the world, um, you pretty well guarantee you'll get the same um, experience as far as the, the product and, and the service. And finally, training. Again, in the world when we're running a business, sometimes not done as well as, as we should. Um, so again, having a structure around that and possibly undertaking a skills gap matrix to sort of understand what skills are, are missing for, for particular people subject to, to their role. Thinking into results. Um, again, we've got a, a guest speaker here um, who's very much got some expertise around this and, and working with Rachel Downey is her name, um, working with her and introducing her to a number of clients over the past six, 12 months, it has made a profound impact on them as far as the results that they're starting to get and the way they go about it. Um, so it's how to shift your mindset to opportunities, as I said earlier. Um, so coming not from a place of fear, um, that's important to understand. So it is, um, you know, in what's happened and how it's happened so quick with COVID, um, 
I can appreciate that many business owners have got this sense of fear, and particularly with the uncertainty around what's next. Um, but fear can paralyze, um, and that's what we don't want um, for this industry. Um, so it's getting that mindset right, okay, and how to help you get unstuck, um, and then how to cross that knowing doing gap I said earlier. So it's all very well to, to have content and know what to do, but to actually do it, there's often the gap. Um, and I've experienced that, and no doubt you guys, I mean, if you've, you know, over the years been to seminars and workshops and it's great content and you get fired up and you go away and you're back in the world when you're running your business and doing what you do, the doing doesn't happen. So this is giving you some tools and approaches to help that. So this is, it is so important and I cannot, again, underestimate the value. And then it's how to achieve your goals. So your goals being very much part of your, your business plan. Um, and then finally, the uh, the last module is about traction. Um, so this is having your business plan, a new business model for the, for the new world, um, with a shared sense of purpose amongst your team. Now, whether this is one person, two people in your team, or a hundred, um, then all what I'm talking about here still applies, just in a different context, okay? Um, obviously, if you've only got a few employees, then some of this stuff I'm talking about is maybe easier and simpler to introduce or change, as opposed to 100, but the principles do not change, okay? Um, it's finalising you know, your cash flow plan, um, so having that template that we will work through, which is it's a nice, simple template. It's nothing complex. Um, and then assigning accountability. Um, so accountability is, is so important, um, not only for the owners to be accountable for what they want to do, um, but more importantly, as importantly, as your employees. So how are they accountable? Um, so... In my opinion, everybody needs one number of performance, and that's their accountability. How's their performance measured? Um, and not necessarily in a revenue perspective or profit perspective, but it might be, um, for example, you know, the average spend of a customer that um, you provide a target and some accountability around. Um, as far as accountability and measures, um, there's typically businesses use what we call lag measures. So that's a measure that's um, undertaken after the fact. So it might be your number of transactions, average spend, um, number of customers, gross profit, profit, uh, whatever it is, but it's, it's after the fact. The lead measures um, are often overlooked, and particularly with your team, these can be really valuable to get um, engagement. So typically a lead measure is something that will impact and influence a lag measure, okay? Um, so in the context of you know, the hospitality industry and restaurants and cafes, um, a lead measure might be the number of times um, someone's bought two coffees um, whilst they're in the cafe. Um, or uh, yeah, it, it's, can't think of anything off the top of my head, um, but it's something that, you, that will lead to a, a lag measure. So it's an influencing impact. Um, so understanding that, introducing that can actually provide the team um, with some accountability to themselves. And it gets personal then. If you've got your team accountable to each other for a, a certain target, then you'll get a lot more impact arguably than if it's a number that you provide them as, as the leader, as the boss, so to speak. Um, because the accountability to the boss is totally different when it's accountability to each and each other 
and that gets personal. Um, and then monitoring progress, monthly reporting, ideally, um, tracking these KPIs as well as financials. So as I've got there, what has measured improves. So um, it's amazing over the years, introducing some structure around uh, KPIs and reporting and getting business owners clear on the business drivers and what they can um, change and the impact makes a profound impact on, on them and their business. Um, so it's, it's understanding what's relevant to be measured and then it's all about, as a collective, talking about ways you can improve those outcomes. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so that uh, sort of covers um, and gives an overview of what our um, group coaching is going to evolve. Um, now, post coaching, and we are looking to possibly provide um, recorded videos of the coaching sessions to be able to distribute those that, uh, that are applicable. Because um, at the end of the day, it's as much from the THA, the government, and our perspective, um, trying to get across as many in the industry to help them through this period um, to recover, rethink their business, and then ultimately rebuild. Um, now, no one knows the timeline um, at this point, and no one really would have an understanding of what that new environment looks like. Um, and I think, like I said, the important bit is controlling what you can control and getting your business um, in a state for sustainable success. Um, it's not gonna be easy, um, there's no question. Um, and from my perspective and Rob Cameron's perspective, um, that's where we see you know, our support and members of this, so, this important industry that feel they can reach out um, to the THA in themselves, but also to Robert I. Um, so email us at any time. You just want a, a sounding board or something, you want to run something by us. Um, that is so important to us that we can continue to, uh, to help people. Um, so post coaching, there's new industry allies that you'll identify and be able to, to, to reach out to, access to the experts uh, that, that will be involved. Um, there is one-on-one -on -one support available um, for those that's appropriate for as well. Um, and like I said, send Robin or, or myself a, an email at any time with any question. We're here to help, okay? Um, so as far as the group workshops go, um, the THA, their contractors, um, as I would have contacted you to um, ask to get you ask you to attend this webinar, they'll be in contact over the next few days to get your feedback and uh, offer you a spot in our upcoming group workshops. Okay. Um, now it's important to understand these will be two hours a week over six weeks. There's no cost to you, but you need to be committed to attend. Um, it is so important we don't have um, people say they're going to attend and don't attend or just attend a few because that will compromise the outcomes for all those involved. Um, so if you're committed and you want to do something about your business, the other side, this is a great opportunity. Um, but you need to be committed. And then that's the doing bit. Okay. Um, other than that, um, you know, that commitment, you might not have to commit because of just... Um, your role, your time. So we are looking to uh, help in other ways, possibly by providing videos of the of the sessions as well. Um, got our emails there. So like I said before, I mean, you'll get a copy of this, uh, this video um, of this session. Um, and so reach out at any time, okay? Um, just, just on uh, winding up, um, obviously, with stage one 
of um, the restrictions now being opened up a little bit um, and booking for limited numbers. Are oh, interesting to know, and maybe you put some uh, something in the question and answer for your circumstance. I'm just interested to know um, what how that's going with yourselves, given there's limited limited numbers. How you're dealing with it? Um, are you having no shows? Because um, that's the other aspect that limited numbers. You don't want people booking and not showing up. So how do you deal with that? Um, are you looking at having minimum spends? Because again, they're there for a period of time. You don't want people sitting around necessarily, um, just having one coffee, um, whereas they can have that as a takeaway. And there's ways and means appropriately of, of managing that. But these are aspects about, you know, the average spend and the like, when you've got limited opportunity as we sort of come out of the restrictions. Um, so we haven't got any, uh, questions and answers so um i'll just give everybody a couple of minutes um and certainly in that if you've got any um suggestions on how um the tha you know robin Knight collins sba could uh, help um yourselves and the industry going forward um please um please feed that back as well when THA um, give you a call. Um, so it's not looking like there's any, um, any questions. I'll just give anybody a couple more minutes. Um, Right, well, there's uh, no questions, so um, I assume that uh, everyone's got a, a reasonable uh, understanding of the group workshops and hopefully um, taken uh, some things away out of today at the very least, um, even if you don't or can't attend the group workshops. Um, and like I said, all, all the best for the future. Rob and I are here to help you. Um, it's important you get the right mindset for moving forward um, and, and don't come from a place of fear. Make sure you have rethinked your business model because if you haven't and you don't intend to, um, I'm just, I, I just fear of what's going to happen to your business because um, it's not going to be easy um, over the next 12, 18 months. Um, and there's so many variables that um, can impact that we're not even aware of potentially. Um, so it is a much about working together, one as an industry, working together with you and your team. So make sure they're involved, working together with your suppliers, your advisors and your community in general. Um, and as a collective, um, I'm sure the industry can come out of this um, as vibrant, uh, to start with a more vibrant in the future. Um, in, a, in a different environment, um, but I'm sure a, a better one for those that can survive. Um, so all the best. Um, like I said, reach out if you need some uh, need some assistance, some guidance, some um, some thoughts, and um, I look forward to uh, maybe talking to you or seeing you at some point.